The Lord be with you. Well, welcome back to another installment in this series as we are asking the question, uh, why do we worship the way that we do? And uh, this all sort of goes back scripturally to the early pages of Genesis, where Adam and Eve, being expelled from the garden presence of God, um, have to learn how to live out in the wilderness regions. And uh, as they have children and their children's lines begin to develop, we're told uh, in the days of the lineage of Seth, people began to call upon the name of Yahweh. And we take that to mean that there was some kind of organized worship where people started to come together and recognize that the Creator God had specific ways in this world and intentions for this world. And only by coming back to the faith of their ancestors and to uh, this God who created them and who had purposes for them, could they find their way in this world. So uh, we have no idea what worship looked like back then, but nowadays there are some rather common and familiar elements. So yes, we're talking about things from Zion's perspective, but fully recognizing that uh, churches all over the world have a lot of these same elements. So we've talked about how there is a formal welcome uh, that isn't just from the church to the people who are visiting, but really from God to all his people as they gather. Uh, there is a call to worship, which acknowledges we're stepping out of the rhythms and the cares and the burdens of uh, our daily lives, and we're entering into sacred place to spend some time with the Creator, Redeemer, God. Uh, there's this act of singing and how um, ever since ancient times, the earliest days of the faith, there seems to be this regular practice of song and music uh, to express something of the internal parts of our being which can't be expressed through just words or intellect alone. And today we want to look at this aspect of prayer. Why prayer is a regular part of worship. Uh, in order to pray, I think you have to believe or presuppose that God wants you to pray, that God is actually going to hear you. He isn't a distant God. He isn't an aloof God. He is attentive. Uh, he is there. We see Jesus even in his day correcting the thinking of the pagans in public spaces. He said, don't pray to God by babbling as if uh, God is going to hear you because of your many words. It's not like we have to get God's attention. Uh, the fact that in those earliest days of the ancestors of Seth, there was this act of calling upon the name of Yahweh, that would seem to be a good indication that they believed they could cry out to him, and that he would hear, and that he would answer. Now, we do see prayer as a regular part of the life and rhythms of God's people uh, all throughout Scripture. Um, one of the more common examples I'll give us from the First Testament uh, is that very often quoted passage from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, which says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now again, I feel like this verse gets misappropriated all the time, especially on the national day of prayer, as if this is somehow God's promise to us in the United States that um, if the church, because we're God's people, and sometimes we misthink that the United States is God's nation, uh, which is nowhere in the Bible, by the way, if we humble ourselves, if we pray that God will forgive us and he will heal our land, the United States. Um, and I don't think that's what this verse is saying. This is very specific to the national promises made to Israel in the Middle East as the promised land, promised to Abraham and to his descendants. Uh, and this verse is actually connected to and an answer to 
Solomon's prayer of dedication from the chapter earlier in uh, chapter 6 of 2 Chronicles, where Solomon, in a very long and specific prayer, has lots of things about asking God to listen. But just kind of at the beginning of that prayer, uh, I want to quote what he says. Um, he says, uh, Yet Yahweh, my God, give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence. May your eyes be open toward this temple day and night, this place of which you said you would put your name there. May you hear the prayer your servant prays toward this place. Hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. So one of the main points of the temple uh, and its construction is so that God would have a central place for his name to reside, for his people to go to meet with him. Even though he dwells in heaven, uh, may this be that um, earthly locale where his presence is most identified with, not just for the people who live in that land, but for people everywhere who come to visit. Uh, and he goes through a litany of things. If your people sin against their neighbors, if they uh, sin in a foreign land, if foreigners come here and pray to this temple, uh, God, may you hear in all of these different ways and varieties. Again, the main emphasis is God when we gather together and when we pray, whether we have sinned, uh, whether we're giving praise, may you hear, and you heard that reiteration in chapter 7, that God says, I will hear. Um, I will be attentive when my people pray. Now, if you need um, reasoning from the new covenant that um, God still continues to hear his people, not just the people of Israel, but the church which is made up of both Jew and Gentile, um, there are certainly lots of places in the New Testament where we see God's willingness to hear and to answer prayer, where people are commanded to pray. Uh, but maybe one of the more notable ones is in the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, it says at the end of chapter 4, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize sorry, with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. These are the eternal words of our God. And what we see in this passage is um, not only do we have access to God like the people of old had access to God, but even more, they had an earthly priest who would go in and make sacrifices uh, at least once a year on the Day of Atonement, for the sins of the people, uh, and we have an even greater high priest, because Jesus, who is not limited by days, who is not limited by this earthly realm, but actually resides in heaven, has passed through the curtain of the most holy place, not the most holy place here on earth, but the most holy place in heaven. He's actually in the presence of the Father, interceding on our behalf as our high priest. Since we have that way, let us be bold to approach the throne of God. That's to go to him in prayer and in petition so that we may receive grace and so that we may get help in our times of need. So prayer is important. It's a regular part of our liturgical practices. There's lots of different ways that we pray in worship. Uh, sometimes we're invoking the presence of God at the beginning. Sometimes we're taking congregational prayers uh, and praying for the needs of us and our neighbors and our loved ones in the world. 
Uh, sometimes we are praying the Lord's Prayer that uh, Jesus taught us to pray. Sometimes we're offering prayer at the conclusion of our worship. Uh, prayer is just a very regular part. I'm not going to belabor it too much because I have another series going on right now of speaking of prayer. Uh, and it's getting into the more detailed components of what prayer is and how we pray and why we pray. Uh, but for this video, just important to notice that we are called to pray. We have special access. That is an important part of our gathered worship as we call upon the name of our God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So continue to gather together as people of prayer. Continue to gather together for worship. Learn more about why we worship the way we worship uh, so that we can be more faithful in doing it. And in these days of ongoing trouble and trial and tribulation, may the peace of God be with you. Amen.